Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's been a while, but I'm back. And today I wanted to just show you a bit about this video I made the other day, which I'll show you really quickly now. And as you can see, that was indeed a very, very quick video. Too quick, uh, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, yeah, it kind of, before you actually realize what's going on, it ends. But what is actually happening is if I just play this here, is pretty much this effect. Right, so if you have no idea what this video is supposed to be, basically when the PS5 was revealed last week, we had this effect was playing. Um, you, there were basically thousands and thousands and thousands of these black metallic ball looking things that would move around and form in shape and they would change color and glow and I thought it was a really cool effect. I really liked it. Um, definitely went on for a while. But I thought the effect itself was really, really interesting. I thought it looked really nice. I think it was a way of basically showing off the amount of particles and the, the power of the PlayStation 5 that you could essentially be rendering this many particles at the same time. I, I assume that's what they were going with there. Now, I put the video up the other day and it seemed to be a bit confusing because people were like, what? There's no PS5 in this video. Uh, but no, the idea was to... I just wanted to set myself the task of creating a similar just a similar effect getting the technique down and just in some way creating a style that looked like the video and today i thought i'd show you a bit more about how i did it because in no way shape or form have i recreated this this has a lot more complex physics simulations happening i i don't actually know 100 percent how they've done it because it's the the balls are following the shape of actual surfaces as opposed to particle systems going around randomly like this unless they're properly strapped to different force fields but today i want to show you what i've done just to roughly get a similar looking technique to this which it's not far off i'll give it that uh, the angles as well that i used really help give the idea that this is a wall of particles here so how did i do it well let's go into the solid mode here i think that would be an easier way of there we go and let's see what we're doing so what is happening here we've got basically two particle systems running one of them being the normal uh, black balls and then the other one being these blue balls that come in from the top there you'll see they fire in and then strap themselves down now the reason why i have this black plane underneath this here was because in reality this is a stupid amount of individual particles or objects there's so much happening here and all of them here are fully high poly spheres which means there's a lot of data in terms of the polygon count this is probably a monster to render that everything is fully nice and round whoever made this this is sony right they've got they've got the power to do this me on the other hand i've just got my pc so I had to use this, a low poly icosphere, which when you look at it up close, there's obviously very janky edges to it. But when you're looking at it from a distance and you've got tons of them, you can get away with it. Um, obviously, if this was going out to a client or it was really going to be a proper presentation, I would replace the particles or what is essentially simulated in the simulation with a full res sphere but for this it was more about just getting the technique down and simulating the the concept of it that was the sphere very simple um i had two of them one was blue one of them the material changes on it so the second one starts off black but eventually changes to blue and all i did in the material was just keyframe the emission to go from black which you can do by right clicking. You can change all of the parameters on anything by right clicking on it and doing insert keyframe. So we had it start off as black here and then I put keyframe and then as we moved along, just change it to blue, right click and did insert keyframe. And that's how in the final render, those balls managed to go from, as you can see, black at the start and then they fade into blue as, as we move along. And that looks quite nice. Um, it's obviously not the same as the actual reveal event where you had this gradient between it all. 
Uh, but again, just for this test, I, I thought it was a, uh, I thought it looked good enough, looked good enough for this. There are two simulations happening here, the smaller one with the blue balls, and then the main one, which is the same effect happening here at the background, but spread out further. And then here, right in the foreground where everything's condensed more because we want to create less gaps between the balls as possible from a certain angle and from the back they can be spread out thinner if you actually look at it from the top there's tons of gaps between them all but it's all about perspective we look at it from this angle and you pretty much you you can't see through well, actually uh it should be from this side yeah from this angle you can't see through the gaps at all it's all about angling in this case in this case they actually had a full block wall of particles but again for us it's all about doing what you can to save memory and save render time as well. So the particle simulation itself, all I had was 1,100 particles. I got them to spawn in basically by the second frame. So frame one, nothing's there. Frame two, everything is in because we don't want to see them all appear. We just want them to be in straight off the bat. Lifetime 200 so that they last for the entirety of this simulation. And obviously I I think 150 frames is too short. I should have gone for longer on this. Whoa, that's that's cool. Jesus. Okay, velocity at one because I didn't want them to fire it off. I just wanted them to kind of spawn in and sit around where they were on the plane. Not much was changed really, just set the scale of them. And children was very simple, just 10 children per object. And that was it. Just to save on, instead of having uh, 10,000 particles in all at once, um, you can change the display amount and the render amount so that you can basically on the render you'll get even more particles showing up. It's a much cheaper way of rendering more particles out than what you're actually looking at on screen. Just played around with how far away they were from each other. And that was it. It's a really simple particle simulation actually. It's basically, oh and I took gravity off. That was it. Gravity off because we don't want it to fall to the ground. Uh, we wanted it to basically stick to, what the hell is going on here? That looks all. Okay, this is, I don't know what's happening, but I think we can agree that this looks wicked. Look at that. Take that off. That is really cool. What does it look like through the camera? I mean, it's pretty mental. Uh, honestly, I don't know what's just happened here. Let me, give me two seconds. Okay, forgive me. We're back now. I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, here we are back with the actual simulation. Um, so that's it really. So we had the one particle system in the foreground duplicated again to go off into the background and that's it that's that's your particle simulation done and dusted but how do we get this movement on them to get them to kind of clump together and just do something a bit more interesting than just float in existence and not do anything well this is where force fields come in handy and honestly you can play around with force fields all day long and you can get a thousand and one different results. This is a magnetic force field. And we also have a wind force field as well. The wind is to press everything back down into itself. So when everything's spawning, it's spawning upwards. You can see it's spawning out this way, this way. And then the wind is pushing it back down just to give it that motion of as if it's settling back into itself. That was the idea with that. And then the magnetic force field, all that does with a bit of movement on it as well. If you animate the force fields, that's how you can get particles to actually move around and follow certain patterns. And the magnetic essentially gets everything to stick to it. And the effects are very, very light. The strength is only on five. The flow is on 0.6. It's not having much effect at all, but it's having enough of an influence on the particles that we're not just having it sitting static after spawning and it's just like this a big grid you can see the difference between the beginning and then as we scroll to the end it's all condensed into a sort of wave and it's lifted up and it just gives it a bit more of a shape to it and that was the idea with that there's no specific way to do what i've done i can't kind of give you a set of techniques and effects it's just an idea of you playing around with what you've got just play around with the physics play around with the settings animate your force fields and see what you can come up with this was really cool you know it was actually i think it was sitting in a grid pattern and following out i i really want to find out exactly how this is done i imagine they're using cubic shapes so for example they're probably adding in a cube like this 
and then getting finding a way of creating a magnetic field for the cube and then everything sticks to the cube um that's imagine that's what i imagine they're doing but if anyone has any theories or ideas as to how they're achieving this effect where the, the particles and the balls are actually sticking to geometric shapes and forming this very specific pattern i'd love to know uh but for now this was uh, as i say good enough it was just an idea it was inspiration from this video to create something that looked like a wall of particles with different colors and i think we achieved that now the other motion you'll see happening in the actual final video is it looks like all of the particles are rotating around in a in a specific motion which I was trying to do with the actual physics simulation itself and it was really difficult to get not only everything to react in this way where it clumps together in the wave but to get all of this to rotate round like you see in the final video would have been really difficult to do luckily because of the nature of this video where there is no background it's just plain white there's no perspective on spatial awareness that effect was achieved just by rotating the camera around so you see the actual camera itself is what is doing the rotating if you look in relation to the ground the camera is rotating which when you see the grid you it's quite obvious but when you take all the grids off it looks like the wave is rotating itself round so it's just about being creative using what you've got using perspective and using the tools you've given it doesn't need to be a fancy physics simulation to rotate all this round just turn the camera around that's it you've done it you've saved yourself hours of faffing around basically a little bit of depth of field as well in there which is nice i like how ev or the new blender 2.83 lets you preview the depth of field within without having to go into the rendered view in the rendered view itself for the black balls very very simple material here um it's just literally pure black halfway metallic the roughness so it's reflecting everything that's literally it and then we just got some screen space reflections on so that all the balls around it are reflected in each other and that's it very nice and simple a white background and there we go very cool very simple very easy to do obviously depending on the power of your pc you can push this even further if i wanted to i could probably go maybe four to five times as more complicated as this before my computer really started to crash and explode but again this was just a test just taking inspiration that's what's fun about blenders you can just you can see something get right in and recreate something um and obviously given more time and if this were actually to be developed into a full project i would obviously spend way more time on it but as a test it was so easy to do very simple to do two particle systems one icosphere object a couple of physics tweaks a couple of force fields and that's it it's so simple and easy to make this sort of effect in blender with eevee right now no complicated materials no complicated physics systems just a couple of buttons here and there and we're done look at that just that wall um and the last thing really was yeah just this black plane i did underneath um as i say just to well let's reload the original file <laughs> oh, because we don't want hundreds of thousands of balls deep oh we, we don't there to be hundreds of thousands of these particles going backwards to fill out the and block it out because that's just going to take up render time so i just very carefully and strategically placed this you can see the green here that plane below so that anywhere you can start seeing through where there would be white if i go on the rendered view if i take this plane out yeah you can see through it doesn't look dense at all as soon as you put that in it looks like there's way more particles than there are there it's a bit obvious but it goes so quick you don't even notice and it's just literally um this plane you can see it just basically rotates to always be just behind and there we go that is it that is ps5 reveal i say recreated but it was more as i say the the illusion the effect the this sort of idea just recreated in that so i hope you learned a little bit about some basic physics simulation in blender and how easy and powerful it can be if you have any questions about what i've done uh, please do let me know and if you know any more about how to get closer to recreating this in terms of 
controlling the particles and anything to do with the materials again please let me know in the comments below i love learning from you guys i've learned so much from everything you've posted in the comments about the videos i've done so far um and that's what it's all about it's about community it's about learning together sharing ideas sharing techniques and building off each other if you enjoyed the video please give it a like i want to give a big shout out to everyone and just say thank you so much for the thousand subscribers we've hit the first milestone we're at 1000 it's absolutely brilliant thank you so much i also want to end this video by saying if you enjoy the music that's in these videos please follow the link below in the description and you can get yourself 10 percent off your first soundstripe subscription and it's a royalty-free library filled with tons and tons of amazing music that you can use in all of your projects that you want to use. It's fantastic. It's very, very well priced. And it will be even better priced because you can get 10% off by using the code in the description below. So if you feel like doing that, go over, check it out. It's a great site. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and we keep building together. That's it from me and I'll see you all in the next video.